Life was peaceful, without any particular issues. My husband and I lived with my mother-in-law, Susan, and everything was fine, until it wasn't. This is mom's land, so it's mom's property, right? <laughs> then you two should just leave. <laughs> Susan's beloved daughter-in-law, Emma, was a spoiled brat. Influenced by Emma, Susan started to change, and our peaceful life quickly fell apart. The two of them stole the simple happiness my husband and I had. Their eventual downfall seemed only fitting. My name is Betty. I live with my husband, John, and Susan. We started living with Susan after my father-in-law, David, passed away. John and I were concerned about Susan living alone, so we had no complaints about the arrangement. We even built a new accessible home on the in-laws' land, thinking about future caregiving needs for Susan. We built a house that is fully barrier-free, so it will be ready for the future. John and I funded a construction, but the land originally belonged to David and is now Susan's. We had no complaints about this and were content with our lives. That is, until recently. She's coming back! I'm so thrilled! Susan was talking about Emma, John's sister. Emma had moved abroad after getting married and had been out of touch. She's back now because of a divorce and Susan couldn't be happier. But to be honest, I don't have very good feelings about Emma's return. It was the same with John. The reason is simple. I haven't heard from Emma until now. She hadn't even attended David's funeral or called us. Of course, considering that Emma was living overseas, this may be inevitable. Her first words after hearing about David's death were, Do I get some of Dad's inheritance? It was hard to feel good about Emma, and it was surprising that Susan was so happy about her return. Susan has always been soft on Emma. I've never seen her complain about anything Emma does. Well, as long as it doesn't affect us, let's just ignore it, John said, somewhat resignedly. Emma rented a house nearby, so we thought it wouldn't be a big deal. I was concerned about Susan, but since Emma hadn't done anything directly to us, we decided to go along with John's opinion. However, John! Mom! I came to visit again today! <laughs> Contrary to our wishes, Emma started coming over frequently. She didn't work and just lays around all day with Susan, thanks to the divorce settlement she received. Susan, who used to help with chores, stopped doing so. She seemed too busy taking care of Emma, even ordering me around like, Betty! Emma wants cookies! Go buy some now! I'm not a stay-at-home wife. I have a part-time job. Yet, I couldn't stand having to spend my few days off catering to Susan and Emma's whims. I once confronted Susan directly, saying, Look, I don't want to be rude, but this is our home too. Can you maybe cut down on how often Emma comes over? Otherwise, John and I can't really relax here. But Susan shot back. This is my property, isn't it? You and John built your house here, so stop complaining. Besides, this is also Emma's parents' house, so why are you being so mean? It's true, we can't argue when she brings up the land ownership. So we've just been ignoring the situation with Susan and Emma. Neither of them listens to John's complaints, either they do whatever they want. Betty, I'm hungry. Make lunch now. Emma says this like it's a given. And if I don't move... Betty, hurry up. Didn't you hear Emma says she is hungry? Susan scolds me for not moving. I've reached my limit. John too seems fed up and decides to talk to Susan and Emma despite his exhaustion from work. Mom, Emma, you two have been way out of line lately. Betty is my wife, not your servant. John sternly addresses the two of them in the living room. But Emma retorts, Well, this is my parents' house, right? What I do here has nothing to do with you, bro. <laughs> Besides, Betty is family, 
and family helps each other out. <laughs> and Susan chimes in. Exactly. Emma just got divorced and is tired. Stop complaining. Emma has been back for weeks now and apparently is still tired. Even though she doesn't work and mostly stays at our house. I'd love to know what she's so tired from. John is also at a loss with their unrepentant attitudes. It must be incredibly stressful. This may be Emma's parents' house, but it's also mine and Betty's home. Emma, you have your own house, right? Both of you are old enough to stop being so spoiled. But they both look displeased. They act as if they shouldn't have to hear this, saying things like, It's weird to have to be considerate in your own parents' house. Or, Emma will always be my adorable daughter. It's all complaining. John, realizing that talking won't help, raises his voice. I hate to say this, but this is the house that Betty and I built. We may not own the land, but we pay the property taxes. If you keep things up, you'll have to leave. Susan, who usually claims the land as her own, is finally silenced. But Emma says, You'd say that about your own sister's parents' house? You're the worst, bro. Don't blame me for what happens next. And she storms out. Susan leaves after getting a message from Emma. After they're gone, John says, Sorry about that. It's awkward. But mom will probably come back soon. We can talk it out then. We agree to wait for Susan's return. But we never imagined Susan and Emma would take such drastic actions. A few days after Susan followed Emma, John and I were living peacefully. Then suddenly, a ton of packages arrived. Confused as we hadn't ordered anything, Emma and Susan show up. We decided to make this house ours. <laughs> you guys need to leave now. John and I are dumbfounded. Did they forget what was said when they were kicked out before? When we tell them there's no way we're giving up our house, they say, Then pay rent to mom, who owns the land. $3,000 a month. If you can afford that, you can stay. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was hearing. No way. This is just too much. We're the ones who built this house in the first place. Why should we have to pay rent to live in a house we built ourselves? As John and I left speechless, Emma, misunderstanding the situation, continues with a smug look on her face. Just so you know, you don't have any say in this, okay? This land belongs to mom, so we could tear this house down if you wanted to. But that would be inconvenient for you, wouldn't it? She says, pressing us further. There's no way such a ridiculous proposal would fly, and tearing down the house would ultimately backfire. While it's true that the land belongs to Susan. If the landowner has complaints about the house, it's not entirely out of the question. I rack my brain for a solution, but I'm not well versed in law, so I come up empty. <sighs> what should we do? That's when I was alone with my head in my hands. John suddenly says, Fine, if you want this house, we'll leave. He says this to Susan and Emma. I can't help but control John. Wait, John, are you serious? John reassures me. It's okay. And continues speaking to Susan and Emma. Even if we do leave, we haven't decided where to move yet. We need time to prepare for the move. It would help if we could stay at Emma's place in the meantime. Ignoring my concerns, John continues talking with Emma and Susan. Eventually, it's decided that we will leave this house within a week. During that time, Susan and Emma will live in Emma's current house. Feeling pleased that John complied more easily than they had expected, Susan and Emma say, Well then... Hurry up and leave! <laughs> and head home with smiles on their faces. I'm not in the mood for laughing, not even a little. Why did you make this decision without consulting me? As soon as Susan and Emma leave, I confront John. I can't let this slide. 
John apologizes with a regretful look on his face. Betty, I'm sorry, but I thought we'd be in a bad spot if we didn't do this. He apologizes to me and explains his reasoning. I can just laugh off what John is saying as nonsense. The truth is, neither Emma nor Susan showed any signs of remorse, and we have no way to oppose them openly since Susan owns the land. Even if we could secure the rights to the house, we'd still have to live with Emma, and the rift between us and Susan and Emma has only deepened, making life even more difficult. To endure their whims for the rest of our lives as a couple, I can't accept that. We'd break before they do. I somehow understand John's point, but we only have a week until we have to move. It's hard to switch gears, but faking cheerfulness is better than this gloomy atmosphere. So, I muster up a bright voice and ask John. I get what you're saying, John. I can't agree, but I understand. So, what's the plan? Do you have a new place lined up? John immediately replies, I thought something like this might happen ever since Emma started hanging around. I know a place we can rent, so we won't need a full week to move. I wish he'd told me that sooner. My minor complaint vanishes with his assurance that he didn't want Susan and Emma to catch on. He adds, But I don't want to just hand over the house. We've got stuff to do before we leave. It's going to get busy. I didn't have the energy to respond to John's enthusiasm. A week later, our move is complete, and we've contacted Susan. We're ready to move out, so come over as soon as you can. Within an hour, Susan and Emma show up. They're both footloose, probably because they don't work, and no doubt thrilled that the house will soon be theirs. They arrive almost dancing with joy, but when they see the house, They are utterly shocked. Well, it's no surprise. Because... Why is the house gone? Yes, the house they were planning to take from us today is gone. What's going on, big brother? Why is the house gone? Explain! Emma is freaking out and Susan is still in shock behind her. Ignoring Susan for a moment, John answers Emma's question. Why? Because it was our house, so we demolished it. What more is there to say? John says this with a cool expression. Emma, on the other hand, raises her voice, her face turning red. That's not the point. This land belongs to mom, right? That means the house built on it is also mom's. How could you demolish it without permission? John laughs out loud at Emma's furious rant. (laughs) <laughs> we could demolish it because it was allowed, right? Think for yourself for once. <laughs> I own the house, not mom. We'll hand over the land as promised. No complaints, right? Emma is at a loss for words at John's response. Finally, Susan speaks up. This is too much. Are you telling your own mother to live in a place like this? We have nowhere to go because Emma already moved out. Facing Susan's outcry, John looks at her with a cold gaze. What are you talking about? You were planning to do the same to us. If I hadn't asked for time to prepare for the move, you would have kicked us out immediately. Why should we give up our house for people like you? Enough with the selfishness. At John's words, both Susan and Emma look down their faces turning pale. There's nothing wrong with what John said, so it's only natural they can't agree back. What they try to do to us has simply come back to haunt them. What goes around comes around. Even a child knows that. Just when I thought Susan would keep looking down, she raises her face to look at me. What do you think, Betty? This can't be right, can it? Tell John. Susan pleads and Emma chimes in. Yeah, you guys found a new place to move to, right? Let us live there with you. You think that's fair, don't you, Betty? They're saying things that make no sense. I decide to give them a reality check. 
as we've said multiple times, that house was ours. We agreed to demolish it, so there's nothing I can do for you. Stunned, they listen as I continue. Besides, why would we let you into our new home? Both John and I have been put through the ringer by you too. You tried to take our house using the land rights as leverage. If you take someone's house, you can't complain if yours is taken. I think this empty land is more than enough for the two of you. After telling them that, John and I left a devastated Susan and Emma and returned to our new home. After losing their home, Susan and Emma found themselves saddled with property taxes, which we had been covering until now. But it only makes sense that they take on this responsibility. The land Susan inherited from David is in a prime location, so the property taxes are steep. To make matters worse, Susan only has her pension, and Emma is relying solely on her divorce settlement. I've heard they had no choice but to let go of the property because they couldn't keep up with the taxes. Now they're renting a place and both have had to find jobs. Their lives are a far cry from the entitled days when they used to mooch of us. As for John and me, we did have to sell our home, but thanks to John's connections, we moved into a fairly spacious new place. It feels smaller compared to our previous home, but it's more comfortable now that Susan and Emma are out of the picture. The stress has lifted, and our relationship as a couple has greatly improved. In the end, it seems Susan and Emma were never real a family to us. Looking ahead, John and I will probably have children. When that time comes, we plan to raise them to be considerate of others using Susan and Emma as cautionary tales.